ready to open up the budget hearing, the public hearing for the proposed FY19 school budget. And it looks like our superintendent is going to give us an overview. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Committee. Thank you very much. Hello. Thanks all. Thank you all for coming tonight. Um, this is just an overview of what it is what it is we're uh, presenting to you tonight. Uh, it's uh, a thing where you're going to have some visuals and a little bit more understanding of what all these numbers are talking about. So let's begin. This is our Conway School and we love it. Everything we do at Conway Union 38 <coughs> Frontier Regional starts with our mission statement of building dynamic learning communities, one student, one teacher, one family at a time. Our vision statement is that we will create vibrant, collaborative, engaging, and inclusive learning communities that empower students to become successful and self-sufficient participants in society. Everything we do is based on that. The student is at the center, the student is at the top, the student is at Everything we do, every penny we talk about, every program we talk about, when um, this is from the district level and then it goes down to all the schools and the schools have their school councils and they work on their improvement plans and it's all based on this. This is what we live by. We have a strategic plan. It's, it's hard to see because, I don't know, it's not coming out perfectly, but we have a strategic plan that the school committee approved <coughs> in October and um, our three areas of growth that we're, we're looking at is our instructional practice. We're demonstrating um, research-based instructional practices to ensure that all the learning needs are met. Assessment and data analysis. How do we know our kids are doing well and that they're learning what they need to be learning and where are their gaps and problems? Assessments, that data, will tell us what we need to do to make sure those children are learning what they need to learn to maximize their education. Tom, did you want one of these? Oh. <coughs> our special education services, we're working on our special education task force, which I've mentioned several times at the school committee meetings, and that is a big part of what we're doing. Those are our strategic plans. Our improvements, again, these are initiatives. We have a whole list of initiatives that go with these strategic plans. There's seats, there's seats up front, Tom. Um, did you want one of these? I got one. Okay, there's some seats up front. Okay. So we're talking about the highest quality instruction available. We know the students in Conway are getting that <coughs> clearly. We want to build our students' critical thinking. We want the best inclusionary practices. And we want to, um, use our professional development time to be collaborative, learning about personalized learning, technology, and assessment calibration. And again, we are really looking at our assessment to ensure that teachers are monitoring students' progress. So those are the, the real, that's the real basis of what we're about. Now when we start looking at the budget, we need money to do all these great things. This is just a short sheet of our budget. Our projected enrollment for next year is 130 students. We have right now 16% of our students are um, they're, um, identified as students with disabilities. So they're, they have um, independent individual learning uh, education plans and they have various uh, needs that we, are, that we work to help them bridge the gap. We have 35% of our students economically disadvantaged. Uh, our teachers are all highly qualified. Right now in this building, we have 15.6 licensed teaching personnel, teaching teachers. That's not uh, OT or PT or uh, those kinds of uh, support personnel, but just teachers. We have 15 instructional assistants. We have one principal. We are choosing in 33 students. That's about 25% of our uh, full enrollment. We're only choosing out three. 
That's amazing. And we are charter, uh, we do have two students going out for charter. And uh, that, of course, costs the district some money. So there's uh, budget drivers. We have increases. Uh, the increases are uh, essentially the contractual salary increases, step increases, longevity. That's roughly about $37,000. We have an increase <coughs> for retirement buyback of $16,000. The health insurance cost for the central office employees is $8,464. Our transportation is up $5,607. And food services, $4,636. We've had some great decreases. The central office expense, even though the number is up for Conway, it's actually decreased from 10.14% to 10.2. And that's based on the enrollment and the enrollment in the other schools and what are what our pieces of the, the pie, so to speak. We've saved about 7,165 net in new hire savings and technology costs, 4,300. $80. We've decreased. We've saved some money there. So, our proposed budget is $2,382,874. The money we're requesting from the town for our town appropriation is $1,908,816. That's what we're asking for the town. This represents a 3.48 increase or $64,116 over last year's budget. It supports our contractual salary obligations, it supports our operational increases in transportation, health insurance, and special education support services. But we also need to remember we have school choice, special ed revolving, early childhood revolving, uh, SPED grant. These things also provide us money and we're going to look a little bit closer at that, those revenues. So these are the funds that we get for the money that we spend that comes not from the town, but from grants and other areas. Our special education grant provides us with $22,270, and that is paying an instructional assistant salary uh, for one instructional assistant. Uh, our early childhood revolving is $25,000, and that is a, another instructional assistant salary in the preschool room. Special education revolving, 246128 That pays for teacher salaries, instructional assistant salaries, medical and therapeutic services in support of independent and inclusive learning environments. And, and they also pay for instructional materials. When we say medical and therapeutic, it's not the school nurse, it's the occupational therapy, the physical therapy, the speech and language therapy. Uh, school choice, which is 25% of our student body, uh, $180,981, and that helps, that pays for eight of our instructional assistants. So 10 of our instructional assistants are actually funded not by the town, but by other areas of funding. So when we look at the big picture, the whole budget, take it all together, we break it up, and we look at our expenditures. So instruction <coughs> is 73%. Administration is 12%. Buildings and facilities is 9%. And other student services is 6%. And we'll see that other student services is transportation. Uh, so we break that down, and as it should be, instruction is 73% of what we do. The revenue sources that we are getting, 80% of what we need and use comes from the town appropriation. The town receives Chapter 70 funding uh, that helps uh, alleviate some of that 80% of what the town is paying. But uh, that includes Chapter 70 funding. School choice pays 8% of our budget. Our SPED revolving is 10% of our budget. Early childhood revolving is 1%, um, and our SPED grant is 1% at this point. Uh, this is, now we're taking the whole pie. Administration was 12% of the pie. So when you look at 
of the budget. Building-based leadership and clerical services, 49% of 12% of the budget is building-based leadership and clerical services. 19% um, of 12%, so they're really small uh, pieces of the pie, but 19% goes to insurance, retirement, and other adjustments. School committee and legal services, 2% of 12%. Uh, the superintendent, business and finance offices, and those are the people who you to uh, they prepare the pay the uh, your paychecks they uh, all the POs the buying and the selling and all of the uh, information that comes through human resources superintendent uh, that's 19 percent of 12 percent and then the district-wide information management and technology that's 11 percent so that's what's really coming from the administration piece so instruction was 73% of our budget. When you look at it here, 73% of the budget, 59% of that is teachers. 59% is teachers. 20% are instructional assistants. So 20% of 73 would be IAs. Uh, medical and therapeutic services, 7%. And again, that's OTPT speech. Guidance and psychological services, 5%. Supplies, materials, hardware, and software, that's 6% of 73%. And then there's a curriculum, a special <laughs> education, and an early childhood director. That's 3% of that instructional piece of 73%. Uh, so buildings and facilities, that's 9% of the budget. That's kind of a small... You know, again, it's a small piece of the budget, but of that piece, 22% go for maintenance, buildings, grounds, and equipment. Heating and utilities takes 39% of 9% to, uh, to pay for those, uh, the heating and utilities. Network and telecommunications, 6%, and our custodial services are 33% of 9%. And then um, our other student services, this is 6% of your budget. Transportation services are 56% of that, which is 6% of the budget. Our food service is 3%. And health services, that would be your nurse and your supplies and that kind of health. And that's 41% of 6% of the budget. So that's broken down. Um, in a, in a picture to let you know kind of where all the money is going in those those four different areas and we all know this but we can't say it enough we want to thank our stakeholders the taxpayers the teachers the staff the school committee for the support the generous support in helping our kids achieve uh, their goals we everyone knows that Conway is a fabulous school and that these students are reaching very very high functioning goals they're really making it uh, and it's it shows it's it's you know we're a level one school the kids are really really getting a great education here and we just couldn't do it without everyone's help so thank you that's that's all I have for that I can go on and discuss the details of the budget I didn't know if anyone had any questions. Um, you know, allow me to just do that. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Jeremy. Thank you. Questions? Discussion? Oh, <coughs> well, we have quite a crowd for no discussion. They've already, they've already seen the mat. They've had the matinee. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, if you, those of you who have a copy of the budget, there's more up here. Uh, we can just go over it again quickly, if you would like. How does the? Oh, Phil, would you like? We can just go over it again. Uh, we can look at the numbers. 
breakdowns that these are double-sided just so you know so. but uh, page 3 of 30 are uh, the expenditures and the revenue sources the same um, pie charts I was just showing you and then it's broken down in the four major areas of the budget which are administration instruction building and facilities and other student services so we are presenting an FY 19, it says 18, but it's 19 total budget in the amount of $2,382,874. And this again is $64,116 more than last year. And it's an overall uh, raise of um, 3.4, it's an increase of 3.4 over last year. Our town appropriation that we're asking for is $1,908,816. And uh, the, uh, we do not have, we're not eligible for Title I's, so, but we do have school choice federal grants and tuition revolving accounts that we'll look at later. So there's a narrative here that talks about the, uh, and you can read those related costs, the, uh, on page 7 of 30, uh, when we look at school choice, it says our school choice is uh, approximately 25% of our students, and the, uh, the income from that was 213625 Our FY18 revenue, plus the beginning <coughs> balance of a negative 50472 was $163,153. Our needs for the eight IAs is $180,981. So what this is saying is we're not spending a year in arrears. We will spend the money coming in next year just to make up that, that uh, difference between $180,000 and $163,000. And uh, as, as this says, this means we are no longer spending our school choice funds a year in arrears. We'll be spending all of our FY18 revenue and a piece of the 19 revenue, and that is the difference. Uh, going forward, we need to monitor the amount of payroll we put on school choice. Salaries increase each year while the revenue remains stagnant at 5,000 per student. So we need to be cognizant of that. Page 8 of 30 is a data sheet. This is a, a, a sheet that explains what our anticipated enrollment is, what our enrollment this year is, plus our special ed students, and our anticipated enrollment for next year. The kindergarten is not completely filled yet at this point, and it uh, looks like pre-K is, but I do believe that we are, uh, we do have a couple of uh, applications for school choice there so it's a uh, 127 today <coughs> today but we're hoping by October 1st it'll be up to at least 130 it's probably going to be more closer to what this year is uh, the, the uh, right side of the column tells you who how many in each uh, job classification <coughs> that we have and so our total uh, employees, 36.80. Page 9 of 30 explains what the difference is between FY18 and FY19, the 64,116. And you can see the difference is the net increase, uh, 55,000 in salary-related increases, a 13,000 increase in operational expenses, and then a decrease of $4,000, and that equals 64,116, and that's the difference we're asking for this year. 
If you move on to page um, page 19 of 30, that explains this this uh, page and this unit of um, items, line items. It will show you where our school choice, our early childhood revolving, our SPED revolving, and our SPED grant are being uh, what they're going for and how we're using those funds. So the FY19 proposed is the town appropriation money we're asking for. The total FY19 budget is that money with the uh, other grant fund funding involved. So on page 21 of 30, you'll see um, um, all non-clerical paraprofessionals, instructional assistants. And you can see that um, 116,000 is for salaries, plus 64,000 is for a total of 180, $981,000 will be paid from school choice funds next year for IAs. Uh, SPED Revolving is paying for IAs at 81,297. SPED Revolving is also paying, they have 3,000 in their lines for substitute teacher teachers their medical and therapeutic services seven thousand and when you go up there's professional teacher professional salaries at one forty nine nine five eight one five nine so the sped revolving is paying for quite a bit and then the sped grant is paying again um uh, instructional assistance salary at twenty two thousand uh page twenty two out of thirty <coughs> again our sped revolving um pays for 500 for professional development, 2,500 for instructional materials, 1,500 for contracted services, um, and that would be, I believe that would be people coming in to, to do some testing, I'm not sure, <coughs> but the contracted services are 1,500. I think people come in and do a functional behavior assessments or some kind of uh, medical or behavioral diagnosis. So when you look at page 27 of 30, you'll notice that our proposed budget that we're asking the town for, on the left-hand side, $1,908,816 dollars is 80 percent of what we use school choice is providing us with 180,981 early childhood revolving is giving us 25,000 uh, so revolving 246,128 and then our sped grant 22,270 so the total operating cost of this building of our organization here is two million three hundred eighty three thousand one hundred ninety five dollars we use roughly close to four hundred thousand in grant funding and other uh, revenue sources so on page 28 to 30 you'll look at our projections of school choice circuit breaker our circuit breaker is starting to dwindle a little bit but mainly because we keep our students here. We are so fortunate that we have such high functioning uh, programs, particularly here. Um, we have a wonderful uh, program for students that struggle called WINGS. And so we're able to actually take those students here rather than sending them out to schools elsewhere and paying a lot of money up to 116,000 to send them out to another school that specializes uh, in caring for these children and we're able to care care for them here because we have people that are qualified and dedicated and really understand how to do it uh, so our projected revenue again for last year was 171,000 we ended up with 161,000 and then um, for 19, we're <coughs> expecting 213,625. This is in the right-hand column. But we have to subtract the money that we used last year, or this year, to help us pay 
for this year's money. So we're coming up with $163,153. We need to spend $180,000, 981. We'll end up with a deficit of $17,828. So that means the money that we would have gotten for 2019, which was will probably be somewhere in the $200,000 range, we're already going to spend $17,000. That's not as much as we spent this year for eighteen, but it's still something we need to think about. There will be a slight, uh, we just won't be keeping that money a year in arrears. Not all of it. There will be there will be quite a quite a amount there, but we're we're going to use seventeen thousand of it. So our projection of our sped revolving fund, <coughs> we are expecting. Um, we're having an ending balance this year of ninety-four thousand three hundred eighty-two thousand. The revenue that we expected this year was 266,374. So the money that we had had was 360,756. What we're projecting next year is a balance of 261,516. We're going to take teachers, speech, this is on the right hand side, uh, instructional assistance substitutes, again, the materials, the field trips, the extended day services, and the training for restraint training. And that subtracted from what we are projected to receive will leave us with 15338000 dollars at the end of uh, FY19. So it, it brings in a lot of money and we're able to pay for many, many services with that money. And then on the last page, we're looking at the distribution of costs. The first one is based on enrollment. The, uh, the enrollments, Conway has um, in 2018, 138 students in our building. 76 at the high school. So that's 15.05% and 16.49 of the regional and then the, of the union. So Conway's cost percentage split of these uh, union regional superintendent's office is this year it was 10.14%, but it's down to 10.02%. And that pays for superintendent, bus, um, business office, a SPED director, uh, facilities director, IT, uh, whatever clerical, the special ed um, assistant that uh, handles all that. That's all of us. And then uh, the, third, the third box there is the cost percentage split, and that's just from the union schools that doesn't have the regional involved in it and again this year it was 15.22 percent but your split this year is 15.05 and there's several things that um, go into that but uh, our early childhood coordinators in there um, our uh, curriculum coordinators in there uh, the <coughs> bookkeeper accountant for the Conway School, her piece is in there, and uh, she prepares all the purchase orders, she processes all the uh, payroll, even though the town sends out the payroll, we process it and keep the records and all that. And then at the bottom, this is your Frontier Regional uh, percentage or assessment that the towns will pay, and it, that's done on an average. And this year it's 16.22, or next year coming up, this year it's 15.86. So that's where we are. And the bottom line of all that talking is $64,116, or 3.48% over last year. 
Are there any questions? Can I just say you did a very good job with yes. that? Yes. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's, it's a I, I hope that we all understand where the money is and what it is. It's complex because some of our money, a little bit goes to central office, a little bit stays here, and then the town has to look at not only our budget, which is 3.49, but the Frontier Regional budget, which is, I think it's 3.03. .03. So, but we can, I believe that we can justify everything we have and uh, the fact that 10 of our um, IAs are being paid from sources that are not town appropriation, I think is a very important thing. And again, the WINGS uh, program, uh, they, they actually bring in a lot of income and revenue to the school because students from all over pay to come. Uh, and that tuition uh, benefits all of us. Uh, the children are included in this community and those experiences those children benefit us too by you know we can have diversity and enjoy ourselves but they're also the income and the revenue is benefiting us as well and the fact that we have three two or three of our own Conway students there that we're not sending out to the tune of three hundred thousand dollars that we can take care of them here because of the people we have working in this building is tremendous it's it's just tremendous so, uh, and, and with all that of course Conway again we don't need to continue to say it but they're doing a fabulous job teaching these students the students are very very fortunate to be here so, but uh, I can answer I think I can answer any questions about um, the budget uh, I to see over the books. Alan Singer Conway Hi, Town Finance Committee I got to do it. Hi. Thanks for this budget presentation, and the, the format's very easy to explain, and I appreciate that. The uh, fiscal 19 uh, budget projection with regard to students on pages 7 and 8, what, do you have any idea about school choices? What, what are you projecting for school choice about 127 and wrong? Have you any idea? Yeah, I, um... Particularly for pre-K, K, it's supposed to be real men. What we're talking... What we're... Thank you. I know I'm not used to these. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. There, uh, back to back. It's, it's new to me. Uh, so what we're talking about is currently this year on the FY18, and that's what we're basing it on. We have 34 of our 138 yeah. students, or 25 percent. Mm -hmm. So what we figured is whatever the school choice students that were in sixth grade that ha are moving out right. we took that number out but we have kind of a rolling thing depending on how many school choice we have coming in for kindergarten mm -hmm. and i understand we had two but then they ended up no we had still group. have we have two. oh we, we have still two. have the two mm -hmm. so we're we're just estimating because we have room in that class yeah. for several school choice kids and we know we have two so we counted those two but we're hoping to count even more. Mm. But this is an actual, uh, actual. Um, so these are these are most so sort the of ten projected for next year for kindergarten would be uh, mostly all, all Conway uh, residents. Is that I'm trying to follow? Right? Oh no, that is mm -hmm. no. Mm -hmm. So those, the, uh, those of the ten, <coughs> two are school choice, and eight are Conway residents. Right? Is that right? No, no. Well. Uh, oh, in kindergarten? Yeah. At this point, I'm not sure. Um, Laura, do you know? Just like to look at the trend, that's all. Yeah. That sounds about two, right? Two, yes. All right. And then for this year, uh, uh, this year, of the 13 kindergarten students, are there six or six school choice? Mm -hmm. Thanks. Mm -hmm. okay. So we have, we, have room, those, we have room to bring more in. Yes. And nice. the chances are pretty strong that we will bring them yeah, in. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Our uh, kindergarten teacher is um, a world class. Educator. Could I just add something to Dr. Perry's answer about that? And that is that the, the school choice, the number, the, the desire to increase school choice students is something that we have heard from school committees, uh, from select boards and finance committees sort of every year that I can remember. Um, and th that 
as we this this year, I think that that has sort of really translated into policy in a way that it, it hadn't before. That it, we went from eight percent to seventeen percent of this twenty five percent of the student body, which is mm -hmm. which is a which is a sizable increase, and yeah. we're able to do that because of the unique structure of the school. Whatever it's, it doesn't increase our fixed cost to add one or two kids mm -hmm. to each class. Um, the flip side of that is that the reimbursement that we get, $5,000 per kid, has not increased since 1976. Um, and that, uh, you know, that, that if, for those, of, for those of you that do converse with state legislators and people above us in that food chain, uh, this is something that could be addressed at no cost to the state because the sending district is the one that reimburses us. So we would do really well. It would be devastating to Greenfield, Gil Montague, et cetera. Um, uh, but we would do well uh, if you just look at it from that perspective. <laughs> also, kindergarten is a bit of an issue because we don't always know the kids that are out there that then show up at all sorts of times. So we are very careful about how many students we take in because suddenly they could appear because <laughs> they go to all sorts of options because there are so many options for mm -hmm. pre-k although our pre-k is excellent uh you don't always it's not always where they go right so mm -hmm. okay. yeah the um Having said that, it's true that we, um, particularly in Conway, are very fortunate because we are a school of choice. We're not a school that students leave from, generally. They come here uh, <coughs> because of the quality. So that does, uh, it makes it hard for other districts, truly, but it, it, for us, it does, uh, it works out for us in, in a wonderful way. Uh, so I'm assuming, I'm, I'm hoping too, that that projection in kindergarten will increase at some point. That we will get um, once once we get the word out there too that there's openings. We will. So thank you. Any other questions? But I'll be the instructional assistants the increase in two. What uh, what particular grades are they for? It looks like probably fifth and sixth for the largest and longest, right? I, I'm having a hard time here. Is it possible if you could come up? The uh, <coughs> instructional assistance on page 8 of 30, the you know, projected increase in that kind of two. For what uh, grades are they? Uh, those are based on IE. Um, oh, IEP? Yeah. All right, mm -hmm. thanks. Yes. Thank you. Again, if we had to send those students out to receive the services, that are required well, to help them be successful. Right the game, yeah, yeah, there's there's a school in West Springfield um, where an aut autism school. Uh, it's they just up their tuition from 110,000 to 116,000 per student. So uh, the uh, IAs really uh, help to keep those students right here in our own school. Thank you. More questions? Yes, sir. Uh, could, could you quickly just explain what, what sped revolving means and what circuit breaker means? Uh, you know, those are, I'm sure those are things that you guys just use as vocabulary words. But Lynn's got it down. Uh, I'm sure yeah. she does. Hi. Uh, I'm going to stand here. Is this okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Our sped revolving account is actually the account that I'm talking about this, this great program, WINGS. Well, WINGS is... Uh, a program and an account where tu students are tuitioned into us and that's revolving uh, that's money that we put in a revolving account those students that are tuitioned into us and help me if I'm getting it if I'm not getting it right um, that money is put in separate from the the regular special ed this goes into a revolving <coughs> account to be used essentially for the students in that program but then it does help the school, at, you know, as a as a whole too. But the costs of running that program, are, are, they're not on the town appropriation. They're actually it's actually almost a self-supporting 
uh, program. It's just like you take tuition in for early childhood. We have an early childhood revolving account. And that's when people pay or other schools pay to come to our schools. That money has to go somewhere. It can't just, we just can't take it and put it in our general fund. So that is called SPED revolving and those tuitions from our special ed students are put in that account. And that account is used to pay for definitely that whole program and sometimes um, other, other things in, in, in the building. And um, circuit breaker? Circuit breaker is when a, we have a student, say we have three or four students that have to go out at $100,000 a student. Uh, that's a burden on the town. So after you spend, and I think it's 40, I can't remember, there's a limit that the town has, you know, the town can bear. But beyond that, Circuit Breaker kicks in from the state and they will help pay for these students that are needy, that need to go out. So we have, it, it's kind of a catch-22 because not so much in Conway, but in other schools, we had circuit breaker. For instance, the high school, we had our circuit breaker was going up because even though no students in our elementary go out because programs like Wings <coughs> take care of them, we didn't have those programs at the high school until very recently. So we were getting a lot of circuit breaker, which was paying for teachers and, and different things so that we were able to establish a program for autistic, autism students and for medically fragile students and for uh, these kinds of disabilities. And what happens is, once we keep the students in, the towns aren't required to pay, so the money we were getting from Circuit Breaker goes down, but our, our costs go up because now we're paying for those students. and So it's a catch-22, but ca um, Circuit Breaker really is uh, it's a benefit to us, to any school that is overly burdened with out-of-district placements. Mm -hmm. So, and the, but, the, but the real best, the real uh, efficient and high-functioning way of running a district is try and keep them in. Build the capacity in your own district to keep these students with you. It's, yeah. it's better for the students, the families, the other kids, <coughs> and uh, the district as a whole. So that's circuit breaker. You know, pop the circuit. <laughs> Bob, we, Bob, it's been our goal to reduce <coughs> and try to eliminate the circuit breaker. That, that, that means we're saving a lot of money doing that. And the circuit breaker also is one of the things like regional transportation that the state decides at the last minute that the law says it has to be funded fully and uh, subject to appropriation. And it's one of those things like regional transportation that they decide the last minute what the percentage is that they're going to reimburse. So if we were dependent on it would introduce more, much more massive uncertainty into our budget process and the taxation process and everything else. Um, and the, the SPED revolving thing, we can't make, we can't profit off of that. Like we can't, they, it, either it has to be spent on the, so that's. You know the two schools that, um, the charter schools that kids are going up to? Chinese immersion is one. It is for both. Both Chinese immersion. Mm -hmm. Yes. Any other questions? Discussion. Well, I had another question, but I, I don't know. Anyway, you know, right all, 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 all of the numbers basically are staying fairly similar, or the or the changes make sense, except. On page, on page 16, uh, no, not page 16, where'd it go? Page 17, th there was a giant jump in insurance and retirement. And is that, is, is that going to stay high now, or is that going to go back to what it used to be last year? Um, I see what you're saying. There's an 83% um, increase. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the insurance and retirement, this is, I believe this is uh, for your central office people because the town pays for the insurances for the, uh, the, the, the Conway employees. So this is your central office. And I don't know, but I think you would know from the town, I think Tom is very uh, familiar with it, but the um, HCIT, uh, <coughs> 
they had been uh, keeping their their uh, rates down hmm. by using reserves, and then they came to a point where they couldn't use the reserves anymore. So what they decided to do was to up the uh, copay and change the way the insurance formula is is. And it's costing us, it's gone up for our insurance, it's gone up, um, well, you know, at least $3,000, and then, uh, and then for retirement, insurance for retirement has gone up almost 16000 Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, and that's because of adjustments made with the insurance carrier. Um, at the Frontier Regional, and I think that, um, you know, we can talk about that, but we've made the, we had to have it approved, we had to accept the law. The bottom line is, if we didn't accept this offering, then we would have paid much, much more in insurance. So where the co-pays are going up and um, those kinds of things, it's helping us keep the, uh, the cost down. Now, I know that the Town of Conway employees, of course, that's under Tom's purview, and I'm not sure where they are on that. But this is for the central office people, uh, because they're regionalized and they get paid from the budget. They don't get paid from the town. Yeah. It's just a big job. <coughs> It's a very big Dr. job. Dr. Petrie, can I ask you a question about that? I could be absolutely wrong, but is that a buyback from a retirement? One of them is a buyback. Is, is a part of that 19 and 16 a big retirement back? Yeah, um, you're I right. The 16,000 uh -huh. is the buy is the re, is the uh, retirement. That, that makes it's a lot of sense. So yeah. it won't it won't reoccur. It won't reoccur next yeah. year. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's that's what I was going to wonder. Yeah. I'm sorry. The, it's yeah. the insurance for the active employees, and that's gone up. Yeah, a little bit. But if we didn't up our co-pays, I guess it would have gone up. Extremely high. I'm sure that. So no more retirements. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. But I think the rest no of that is the Franklin County uh, increase, <laughs> the, and uh, which was what uh, more than 10 percent this year. And uh, you know, I uh, I asked about that, and we were told that the it, in the, that it's because people are living longer, which is a flat out false statement. <laughs> we're the we're the only country that has a declining uh, only industrialized major country that has a declining lifespan now. Um, so I don't know where they're getting that from. Yeah, I remember you had said that earlier, so I, I just see. wanted to hope that it wasn't something that would be reoccurring. No, yeah. absolutely yeah, it's not. It's going to go away. Absolutely not. No one else is planning on retiring. The rest of us youngins is here now. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Around a while. <laughs> I just have a question about Title One. Uh -huh. Why we're no longer eligible? Have they changed the formula since we have They did. Uh, Title One depend. It, it's really for economically disadvantaged right. students, mm -hmm. and they have a formula. For years and years, it's always been free and reduced mm -hmm. lunch counts, but it's not anymore. And they have this different uh, way of figuring it. But last year was the first year that Conley did not. Right. And so we had to jump in there because there were salaries that were on the Title I that we had to pull off. Yeah. But yeah, the, uh, apparently 35% of is, is not of enough. economically disadvantaged isn't enough well, or it's not enough mm, students or it's not enough of a proportion 25 percent of our student body right. is not enough um yeah. no that's a good choice 35 percent it's not enough to be but we we lost our funding for title one right. yeah. like, waitley did too yeah. yeah and in the in the federal budget title <coughs> one expenditures keep going up every year one of the things that um, people don't realize is that uh, title one expenditures in the federal budget are one of the only things that the federal education secretary can redirect um, and uh, the one that we have now is redirecting title one um, to to chart yeah yeah to, to a tutor um, no, to to uh, uh, to uh, charter and private schools um, that, that's their open 
open thing. So it's going to be worse next year and the year after that. And they, they aim to eliminate Title I payments to public schools altogether. That's going to really affect um, the city schools. Yeah. yeah. Any more questions, discussion? Okay. Do I need to close the budget hearing? Okay, so the budget hearing for FY19 is closed. And then our meeting will start, but I'm going to exit and let you take the meeting. Because it's my birthday today. Oh, so happy birthday. Birthday. You should have probably to the birthday the yeah. On the budget? Yeah. On closing the hearing? Oh, we yeah. didn't take a vote to open it. Uh, we have to open the meeting and then we can vote for the budget. Yeah, to, to approve. Okay, you got it. Happy birthday, Bruce. Thank you. Right. Um, before we leave and lose everybody, just while everyone's here, I did tell the school committee at the last meeting, but she's in the audience. I just want to say that June Chamberlain was the winner of the Grinspoon Teacher of the Year Award. Woo -hoo! You're welcome to stay. This is going to be really boring. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank welcome. you. Welcome. Thank you for showing up. Well, what time is it now? Mm -hmm. Why don't you vote on the budget right now? Right now we'll do it, but I need okay. to figure out the manual. Yeah. I turn it off at that. Uh, uh, 6.55. Yeah. We're going to do the budget vote you might want to stay for. Very exciting. <laughs> We're not expecting any surprises. Okay. okay. <laughs> Okay, do you want to? No, go ahead. All right, can I have a motion to mm -hmm. open the vote to approve the 2018 budget? FY19. FY19, thank you. In the you. amount of? In the amount of, you just need to specify the amount. Um, may I have a? Uh, $2,000,000. We're just voting on the town appropriation. Which is one one point nine. The one one nine zero eight eight one six. So moved. Second. I'll second. Okay, so move from Phil. Second from the lane. Yep. Yep. Budget is approved. Oh, oh. all all <laughs> all approved. Say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you so all much. Right. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you later. I'm the vice chair. I'm Rusty. Chair, I'm yeah. Chairman. I don't get to pinch it very often. Uh, thank you. All right. Okay. Um, so we open the meeting. We're going to say at six fifty-four. Yeah. Thank you, Ira. Will do. First order of business is approving the minutes. So tonight you have five warrants. Oh, for I get proof the minutes first. Okay. It's frazzling after the budget. Oh, wait, did you? Is the public comment in the regular meeting? Yeah. Can you yes, skip over that? We have a public comment for the regular meeting. For the regular meeting, right? Do we do that towards the end, or I don't know. All right. Public yeah. comment now. Okay. Public comment now. So before we get on to business, do we have any public comments? Yes. Okay. okay. So okay. I'm taking off my school committee um, and, uh, hat All briefly right. and putting on my uh, Conway Historical Society trustee and past president hat. Okay. And um, this is uh, this was the last painting. Uh, that the school owns that was in the Lester Stevens exhibition. And when we went to rehang it, it was in too bad of a shape to hang. So the Conway Historical Society raised the funds to reframe it, to clean it, um, remat it, and um, et cetera. And we are handing it to a uh, principal in the school and hang it, hang it where you like. But it's in good shape now and it won't fall and hurt the children. Wow. Thank you. And, uh, could someone take a picture of her holding it for the website? Sorry. Oh, you yep. can hang it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. And if you send Thanks. it to me, we'll get it from the Okay. Okay. Ready? And okay. And one more. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, thank you. That's my public comment. Very nice. Sarah, you're going to hang it? You're going to hang this? Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Okay. So thank you. Beautiful. Okay. 
Um, so Phil, keep me on track as I need it. Um, we've remo we have reviewed the minutes from the last meeting. Oh, uh, yeah, motion to approve the minutes. So a motion to approve the minutes from our last meeting. We have a motion. A motion to approve the minutes. Okay. Second. Second, okay. Aye, aye. All right. Um, All we'll say aye. Yeah. What's right. the agenda? Okay, next is financial statements. Mm -hmm. There are five warrants tonight, totaling $45,299.96. Please sign them when they come to you. Thank you. This, uh, yeah, this might have been from Frontier. Yeah. Is the whole thing from Frontier or just that? Just, apple? just this. It might have been inserted incorrectly. So these are all signable then. Well, now, I'll Lynn, I can go through them if you want because I'll know which ones are Conway's right away. Well, what happened is I think all the, the I can go through them fast. All the packets now. Yeah. Did you get Conway's? We, we, have, we, have, we have four here. Okay. One, two, three, okay. 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 four. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so is there one more that... There's we need to check in. You have four there? Mm -hmm. Four here. Yeah. Okay. There's five of them. That's the fifth. There it is. There's the fifth. Okay. Yeah. You just need Michael's signature. Yeah, okay. Okay. So we've done the minutes. Yep. We've done the financial statement. Okay, we have done public comment. Do we have any unfinished business? No, we took care of that. Okay. Um, we've done all discussion items for the proposed F-19 budget. Mm -hmm. And we voted to approve that. There's the policies. The policy was the discussion items for today, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we have a small list of uh, discussion items. Uh, there were amendments to the following policies as recommended by the Massachusetts Association of School Committees. Uh, should I list these for discussion? This is, this is a first read. Mm -hmm. This is um, for you to read. If you have questions, I think Phil could answer them tonight. But I believe that... Um, we will have discussion at April's uh, joint, joint school committee meeting. Okay. Uh, what what we've done is looked at uh, the ones that we had currently and then compared it with what the Massachusetts Association of School Committees recommended due to new laws, new uh, requirements, and uh, just changing of language. For instance. Instead of using the word handicap, we would change it to disability. So these are the uh, ones that we've worked on so far. It's not a big pile, but we've really worked hard on them. A lot of thought, the committees put a lot of thought and work into really deciding uh, the best way to, to go forward with these. A lot of homework went into uh, figuring out what it is we'd like to do. So. And it, it's a chance, so a lot of this too is not mask, it's just sort of us that, I mean, there's, the, the ones that are before you for discussion, this f are mostly from mask, but there's a few that are coming up that are strictly our own invention. Um, uh, and and a, a lot of it too, it's, you know, when, when you look into say, um, the desire to uh, uh, decrease the in, the retirement payouts, the, 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 those huge lump sum budget items that hit when one person retires and the town owes forty thousand dollars, and we've always been getting screamed at about that, and um, a lot of that is the uh, is the sick pay, the vacation pay. No, I'm sorry, it's the sick pay, the sick pay buyback. Correct. And when we did a survey of that, we were the only one of the only districts that had unlimited. Um, and that mo most districts had no buyback at all. Some had one year, a couple had three years. Okay. 
and we start. And when we went to address that with the uh, union, the negotiations last time, they looked at us and said, "Well, all the non-union employees get that. Right. All, all the all the administrators get that. Why are you?" You know, which is a perfectly rational response. So we started with the administrators, mm -hmm. and we know, and, and so now it's the through the policy we can address the non-union, and, and so something like that is coming up, and that's strictly our own language and our own idea and mm -hmm. our own desire to um, eliminate that one thing. Mm -hmm. And once we have gone administration and non-union, then the next union we can now bring it up and. You know, we've done what we can to move that forward, but it's a good illustration of how complicated it can be just to address like one subject right. and like a multi-year, multi-thing, mm -hmm. like that just to like deal with one thing. Mm -hmm. It's nuts. Um. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So this will be up for discussion as well at the joint meeting in early April. Okay. So it's a first read. So okay. we're asking you to look at them and compare them. You'll see the strikeouts and then the red, which would, is um, the added language. So the red words are added, and then the strikeouts are what we're uh, <coughs> removing or modifying. And uh, the, the one that's probably going to get a lot of discussion, I think, would be this uh, personnel policies and procedures for the non-union employees. The only piece we're looking at in that uh, GB is longevity at this point but there probably will be some more some discussion. And I will have forms for the policy committee to meet next time that will help them, uh, that, they, that they can pass out and explain more about what it, what it really, the impact, the financial impact, which will not be that, won't be that great, but we need to uh, give an idea of next, you know, what it, what it will look like in FY20, FY21, FY22. I believe it's too late for FY19 because we're voting on the budget now. So this won't take place until 2021, 22. But uh, okay. we've put a lot of time and effort into it. We've also put a lot of time and effort into buses and student accounts and um, access and deficiencies. Uh, so that's quite a bit we're looking at we're now we're looking at the wellness policy, which isn't even on the list. We're looking at IT, acceptable use, not even on the list. But these are things that just need to constantly have housekeeping mm -hmm. and constantly be in, in our minds mm -hmm. as we move forward. So and, and we've discovered that no human being can endure like more than an hour and a half yeah. length of meeting <laughs> on policy. Yeah. And so that makes it harder to get because you by the time you really get one thing done. <laughs> Time to go, but mm -hmm. you can't. Otherwise, you just go yep. really collectively. <coughs> yeah. I remember dearly two years ago, <laughs> 90 minutes a month for many months. So thank you. Um, on to reports. Is there a report from the collaborative? No, but the next. Okay. Next All right. Principal's report. Yeah. Um, Ashley, Michael, you were just asking about the Apple purchases. Mm. They they were iPads for. Uh, for Conway, but they get sent to Frontier so the tech department can put on the apps and things. Okay. Did you have another question? Okay. Nope. Thank you so yeah. much. Oh, they dress them up for you. They get the, for the kids. They get them all. They get them all. Okay, so um, real quickly. Oh, sorry. Um, with regret, we've accepted uh, the resignation of Jerry, our part-time evening afternoon uh, custodian so um, due to family commitments and kids getting older and needing to be driven everywhere uh, and Jerry's been great you know I've only this is only my second year but what a great addition he has a nice positive attitude and so we have um, we've advertised for the position um, Jerry's last day is Friday I do have someone uh, I'm meeting with tomorrow who will most likely fill in until we find someone um, so we're moving on with that. Um, Tyler Conroy came to the school last week. Um, he's a Conway Grammar School graduate and he has created, created a program called BU and it's a really great message. It's about being yourself and um, uh, 
Tyler explained that he experienced some bullying growing up himself. And he did this through a little bit of talking and a lot of popular, appropriate music. It was just fantastic. The kids were singing along, and then he'd give a little message, and then he'd sing another song. Mary and Sarah, mm -hmm. did, yeah, it was, it was really, really Very amazing. We were his first audience for this program. Um, and we were excited to be mm -hmm. so. It, w it was really great. The kids loved it. Some of the little kids were getting his autograph after. It was so cute. Ruby loved it. Wants to go to a Tyler Conroy concert. Yeah, uh, he's a great choice to go. It's a great choice to love it. Love it. Um, excited to report that the Frontier uh, ten students from the Frontier National Honor Society will be coming next Thursday um, to talk about life as a Frontier student. Um, so our, stu our school council, specifically Amelia Leonardo, this was her, um, Leonardi, this was her charge um, so that the kids can learn about Frontier at a younger age and from kids. So I know that the National Honor Society students have a PowerPoint presentation ready and we've sent out invitations. We'll send a few more reminders on that. So we're excited about that. I just want to update you that um, currently we have approximately fifteen hundred dollars in unpaid lunch balances, um, which is is definitely less than last year. Um, but I want you to know there's 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 sort of four make up a large part of that. I am almost positive I took care of about four hundred ninety five dollars of that today, but I just want to keep you updated as to um, uh, and, and it's a free free lunch um, form that someone didn't fill out that they will allow to be retroactive. So I think we'll have it down to about $1,100. Um, still not exactly where we want it to be, but I thought I'd give you an update. I owe you about 80, so I'll send that in tomorrow. Yeah, thank you. Can you. Cross it off the list. <laughs> awesome. Um, and just a little early release update, you know, what do we do on those Fridays when kids are released early? Um, so we continue our um, highly effective work with Mike Anderson. Actually, Phil was what came in last week, right? And you see all the team working. I and did met Mike Anderson himself? Yes, you did. <laughs> so, um, so again, I think I've said this several times, but there's a group of teachers, and I were going down to the ASCD conference, which is an international teacher conference. Well, you know. It's from people from all over the world. And we're presenting next weekend, so we're very excited about that, very proud of that. Um, Mike is presenting with us. Mike is um, an ASCD speaker, so he's gonna be do about seven minutes of it, and then we're gonna do the 83 minutes of the rest of it, so we're excited about that. Um, and then uh, Sarah Carlin, we had a, we've had a communication committee meet last year. We did a survey with families about communication at Conway Grammar School, and out of that came various things like Class Dojo and and um, our all school meetings where parents come a little before and stay later. And then Sarah Carlin did some work on um, a couple of our early release days on parent communication and parent relationships, and it was it was really great the work that we did with her. Was In she, the April, was she paid? She was she paid by the taxpayers for her work. Um, she, here, no, she wasn't paid by the taxpayers. <laughs> and then our um, April early release days will be parent teacher conference times. So that's yeah. our update. Thank you. Uh, superintendent's report. I um, I really don't have a report outside of thanking the school committee again for their support of the mm -hmm. budget and the great work that's truly the great work that's happening in this building. Yeah. I'd say your report was the presentation mm -hmm. to the town. That was a good job. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Um, Sweet. Executive session. Yeah. No, it's nothing. So, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. All right, Phil, first, second? I'll second. Okay. And it's 714. Okay. Great job, everyone. Yep. Thank you. Great job.